How did my totally tubular gamers and you know what we're back with? We're back with another ranking video. Shocking, I know. And today's ranking video is going to be on the Batman Arkham games. Yes, the series of Batman games that not only showed how great superhero games could be, but how great licensed video games can be and is all around one of the best game series of the last like 10 to 12 years. So if you don't know Batman, well, you've come to the wrong video. Anyway, Batman Arkham was started in 2009 with Batman Arkham Asylum by Rocksteady. The game would be a massive success, critically, commercially, fan-wise, critic-wise. It was just very beloved by everybody, and everybody could agree right then and there that it was probably the best Batman game like ever made. And naturally, a sequel was greenlit pretty quickly, and not only just a sequel, but really an entire series of games was greenlit that is still kind of ongoing to this day. And the Batman Arkham games were very influential for every superhero game after Batman Arkham, and a lot of superhero games are compared to Arkham still because Arkham was just that great. And also the combat in Batman Arkham was not the first to do this style of beat-em-up combat, but it was still very influential in the early 2010s to mid-2010s of how combat should be in video games with a counter and attack, and it it's in a lot of games. But this series is really beloved by not only fans, but critics as well for not only a great attention to detail, faithfulness to Batman, being one of the best portrayals of Batman ever, but it's superb combat, it's great stealth, it's really interesting boss fights, it's great open world, the superb stories, and the list goes on and on and on. These games are beloved for the most part. Now, when it comes to myself, I've been here pretty much since day one with Arkham Asylum back when it came out, and I've played pretty much all of them at release since then. Quite like the Batman Arkham series, Batman is my favorite superhero. Good reason he is is because of these games. I think they're great. There's really no truly terrible Batman Arkham games. Some of them are a little questionable, but there's not any that I would just outright say are awful. And one day this list might be outdated, we might get some more Batman Arkham games, can only hope. Right now we got Gotham Knights coming out soon enough, and that doesn't seem to be in the Arkham series, but it is similar in terms of gameplay. There's also the upcoming Suicide Squad game, but this doesn't appear to be a Batman game, so there's that also. And for this list, I will add we are not including any mobile titles, that's a, that's a no. But anyway. Enough with all the introductions, like, share, sub, comment your favorite Batman game if you got a favorite, let me know all that good stuff. What do I think is the worst of the Arkham games? I think the worst of the Batman Arkham games is Arkham Origins Blackgate, which is very different from the other Batman Arkham games. Arkham Origins Blackgate is actually the sequel to Arkham Origins. It is a side-scrolling game and sees Batman trying to stop a prison riot at Blackgate Penitentiary, where he's trying to stop the Joker, Penguin, and Black Mask. It also goes over how he meets Catwoman, and, well, some more stuff goes down. I will say that the story and characters, really just everything about this game and its world is very filler. It feels like it was just kind of phoned in, and it doesn't do anything all that exciting, and it can absolutely be skipped. And when it comes to this game, yeah, it can pretty much be skipped also. The game isn't terrible, it's not even all that bad, it's just very filler and quite unfulfilling. The game is a decent attempt to bring the Arkham gameplay to a 2D perspective, however, a lot of things just do not transition that well over in my opinion. Like Batman still cannot jump, he can't jump in the main games, but this is a 2D side-scroller, it's just kind of odd, I mean you still use the grappling hook. The combat is pretty different from what you know from the Arkham games, I mean what's here is fine enough, but it's nothing special. The game's levels and general navigation isn't very good, the prison is pretty boring, it's pretty dark and just traversing through it is just kind of a pain. You also gotta remember this was originally a 3DS and Vita game, and playing it on anything else, as it was re-released on everything else, yeah, it just kind of exposes that it wasn't exactly all that great, and I mean, it's not terrible, I wouldn't recommend it, but I mean, it's not the worst 2D spin-off I've played, it's not even close to the worst 2D Batman game. Our next game is Batman Arkham VR, which is, well, very different from the other Arkham games. It's a VR game, so the whole game is played in a first-person perspective and takes place after Arkham City and before Arkham Knight. The story doesn't exactly do all that much with the Arkham series and just kind of has Batman doing a series of investigations. Really, the whole game is just doing a series of investigations. There's actually no combat in the game at all. 
and most of the game is presented as puzzles that you have to solve. And these puzzles present some interesting scenarios for VR. You can't walk around either, you have to teleport everywhere. And while this game would be really cool, the problem with it is that the game is like an hour and 20, maybe hour 30 minutes long. Like, it is ridiculously short. This was one of those early VR almost tech demos that was released rather than being a full-fledged game. It's like this game has some really cool ideas, being in first person as Batman is really cool, investigating all that, there's some really interesting opportunities that are created here, and I just don't think that the game is able to make the best of it because it's so short. If you have a VR headset, you should check it out, I mean, it's dirt cheap, you can beat it in an extended lunch break, but for everybody else, you can just totally skip this. Alright, our next game should be more familiar with Arkham fans, it is Batman Arkham Origins, released in 2013, and was not developed by Rocksteady, but rather WB Games Montreal. So Arkham Origins takes place before Arkham Asylum and sees Batman in his early years of being Batman and sees him taking on Black Mask and his gang of goons really and is the first time that Batman meets up with the Joker. The game does go for a totally different vibe than the other Arkham games. I mean, just the fact that Batman and Joker have different voice actors from Arkham Asylum and City just says a lot already right there. And when it comes to the story, I'm kind of mixed on it. I really like Black Mask's gang of people. I like Deathstroke here. I like some of the other villains getting some of the attention. But then it kind of just drops everything for Joker again. And I was just like, man, really? We've been there, done that so many times already. I don't really want to see that again, but whatever. I mean, it was fine enough story was fine enough. When it comes to the gameplay, it basically is just Arkham City, only a little less refined, and a few differences when it comes to the detective gameplay. It still sees Batman in an open world as he beats up a ton of mooks with its great combat system, being stealthy when they get smart and actually use guns, and sees Batman putting all of his detective and investigating skills to work, trying to figure out what happened in some of these crime scenes. And this was the game that introduced the whole first person detective mode kind of thing that is in Arkham Knight in VR. And you know, I think this was a good addition for the series. It was pretty natural progression and I liked it. This game also brought multiplayer to the Arkham series. And well, I played this back when it came out and I thought that this was pretty awful when it came out and it died like immediately. So less said about it, the better. Now, when it comes to the core gameplay of Arkham Origins, it is good. I think that a lot of people discredited this for very little reason other than, yeah, it plays it really safe and a part of it feels like it's on autopilot. And the gameplay, it is solid. It is good. The thing is, is the other Arkham games, they did the gameplay better. This game has good free flow combat. It has actually really good boss fights. I love the boss fight with Firefly. The game has good stealth segments. It has a so-so story, and it even has some cool investigations. But Arkham Asylum City and eventually Night just did this all a little better. So if you like that Batman gameplay, try this. You'll probably like it since it's more just Batman gameplay. It plays it almost a little too safe in my opinion of how like similar it is to just the other ones. But I still really did enjoy my time with Arkham Origins. I would say that the game is a tad underrated, actually, and I have no problem recommending it to anyone who likes the other games and Batman in general. Our next game is Batman Arkham Knight, released by Rocksteady in 2015. Now, Batman Arkham Knight is the final game in the main Arkham series, at least at this point in time. The game's story is about Batman confronting Scarecrow who has come back and he's launched an attack on Gotham City causing a citywide evacuation. And he also has help from the mysterious Arkham Knight. I actually really enjoyed the story of Arkham Knight. Scarecrow is one of my favorite Batman antagonists, so for him to be the main focus here, it was pretty great. The Arkham Knight himself, uh, that was one of the weaker points in my opinion. But overall, I really did like the story of Arkham Knight and I actually really liked the ending as well. And when it comes to the gameplay, it's probably the most refined of the Arkham games as it was built with the PS4 and Xbox One in mind. It sees Batman in a now empty Gotham City, exploring the open world fighting crime and doing what Batman does, getting into a lot of fights with mooks, being stealthy when need be, solving investigations, and the newest addition and complaint for most people, the Batmobile appearing. The free flow combat is as great as it's always been in Batman. It feels very refined, it's really fun to beat up a ton of people, it's quite satisfying. You get a nice number of new gadgets that you can kick some ass with, it's great. The stealth, also, still really good. I really enjoyed the stealth in this game. And the investigations brought up some intriguing parts. They might not have been as good as Arkham Origins investigations, but I still think that they were actually good. 
But then we have the Batmobile gameplay. Now there's two types of Batmobile gameplay. There is driving around the city in the Batmobile, which is pretty standard for an open world game. You're just driving around in a car pretty quickly. And you know, I thought this was pretty cool. You get to drive in the Batmobile around the city. I mean, I like this, but then there's the Batmobile gameplay with the combat. The combat sees the Batmobile turning into a tank and fighting other tanks with its big heavy guns. Essentially, this just devolves down to a bunch of circle strafing and shooting weak points and just shooting the other tanks. And, well, most people can agree this isn't very fun, myself included. I really liked all the gameplay of this game except for the tank gameplay. I think the tank gameplay is very shallow when compared to the rest of the game. It gets repetitive quickly, it's just not all that fun, and it doesn't even make that much sense in the context of Batman, like he's fighting these unmanned tanks in another tank, like what? And I know they give context and all that stuff, but I just didn't really like this very much, and I didn't like that some of the bosses were actually bosses that you fought in this tank. I thought that was really lame. I really thought that the bosses in general were not as good as the previous couple games bosses. I thought that they were mostly lacking. But despite all this, I still thought that the game was actually pretty good. If you can get past this kind of annoying tank gameplay, there is still a really good game here with a great story, an excellent presentation, and some really scary moments. Like, Scarecrow really does mess up Gotham City. Like, this game is rated M. It's the only Batman game rated M, and it's rated M for a reason. This game has some scary sequences in it that are really messed up, and I actually really enjoyed that. I was like, damn, this is really dark. This is really cool. And if it is the end of the Arkham series, I think it was a pretty fitting end, and I actually did still enjoy the game. I thought it was quite good. And the second best Batman Arkham game is the original, Batman Arkham Asylum, released in 09 by Rocksteady. The game sees Batman fighting his longtime foe, the Joker, who has taken control of Arkham Asylum and released all of the inmates, basically. And it's up to Batman to just stop all of it. The game's characters, and really the plot in general, is actually really good. It is some of the best Batman media you will find ever. It is superb. The way the characters are presented is great. The way the villains are portrayed are great. And it really plays on all of Batman's strengths. And when this game came out, a lot of people were saying this is the best Batman has ever been in a video game. And even all these years later, they're not wrong. It's really maybe the best Batman's ever been portrayed in a game. He's great. The world is great. I love all the villains. I love just about everything when it comes to that stuff with this game. I love this game. The gameplay was just incredibly well put together, and the game's pacing was also superb. This was the game that introduced the free-flowing combat to really not just Batman, but kind of gaming as a whole. Sure, it had shown up here and there throughout the years, but this was really the game that made a lot of other games copy this kind of free-flow combat, where you punch with one button and you can counter with another, and you have to counter when a certain thing above an enemy's head shows up, or something along those lines. The combat was very satisfying and it was just a ton of fun to just beat the crap out of these dudes and you really felt like you were beating the crap out of these people. Then there was the stealth segments where Batman would hide up on the gargoyles and these buildings as people with guns would try to hunt Batman down and you'd have to take them out all sneaky bicky like. But it wasn't just combat that was here as well, there was the investigation aspect to the game where you would have to investigate clues, areas, follow scents, trails you'd have to do some real detective stuff and that was really cool also. And there were some puzzles here. Additionally, just exploring Arkham Asylum was actually really cool also. You could explore a ton of this game and find a bunch of Easter eggs and secrets and the biggest of these was obviously with the Riddler where he'd hide his Riddler trophies behind puzzles and hidden in areas and I've always really enjoyed finding the Riddler stuff. It was cool in Night and Origin, sure, sure, all that stuff, but I loved it in Asylum. And all of this gameplay just comes together superbly with a fantastic atmosphere and just a side of Batman that we've really never seen before or really since. And all of this leads to being one of my all around favorite games of all time and I really do enjoy the game quite a lot and I have a lot of fond memories and at this point I'm like nostalgic for the game because I've been playing it for so long and yeah it's not perfect the final boss is pretty awful but I still really like it, and if you haven't played it for some reason by now, I don't know what you're waiting for. 
but it's not my favorite Arkham game. My favorite Arkham game is Batman Arkham City. I really love Batman Arkham City. It is also one of my favorite games of all time. It might even be in like my top 10 favorite games of all time. I got it day one, was crazy excited to play it when it came out. I remember staying up all night just playing this game. I was so into this game. I really love Arkham City. Arkham City takes everything that was great about Arkham Asylum and makes it just a little bit better with a ton of more villains, much, much better boss fights, some great fleet flowing combat, the stealth is even better than ever, the detective stuff, it's all great. I love the open world of Arkham City, everything's been expanded, it's bigger, it's longer, it's better. I just really like Arkham City. It is without question my favorite superhero game of all time, my favorite Batman game of all time, and arguably like my favorite open world game of all time. I have a lot of good memories with this game, I have a lot of great times with this game, and I think that anybody who's played this game can agree that it is fantastic and one of the best licensed games, if not just one of the best games like ever made. The plot is superb, it is about Batman getting incarcerated into Arkham City, a super prison enclosing the decaying urban slums of Gotham City, and it's about him figuring out what the hell's going on with Hugo Strange, the warden, and stopping a bunch of the criminals from, well, being criminals. Basically every Batman villain that you've come to know and love, they appear in this game in some way, shape, or form. Like, this game really tries to just include every Batman villain, and it's just really great. They're all portrayed incredibly well. I just love how Batman's portrayed. I really like the atmosphere of this game, and it just does very little wrong. I thought that the game's ending was incredible also, and this game really just gives off a feel. You really feel like Spider-Man, or Batman. You really feel like the Dark Knight. It's, it's really great, and... I just don't think it's ever been replicated again. Arkham Asylum is great also, but Arkham City just does it different and does it the best. It does it so well, in fact, that it might do it too well. I feel like every superhero game has been compared to Arkham City since the game's release. Every game has to measure up to Arkham City, and it's like, good luck, because Arkham City is just that great. The only one that comes close that isn't Arkham Asylum is like the PS4 Spider-Man game. That game's great too, but... Batman Arkham City just blew my freaking mind when it came out with its incredible gameplay, great visuals, great soundtrack, great story, just everything was great. It even had some DLC like a year or so later that was also pretty cool. I didn't even bring up the DLC for the other games because it's just a waste. And yeah, I mean, it's, it's Arkham City. What hasn't been said about it already, if you've already made it to this part of the list, you already know Arkham City is probably like the best Batman game of them all. I mean, it... I just really love it. It's one of the best licensed games you'll ever see come out, literally ever. And it was the Batman game we were all waiting for. And now that we've got it, I don't really, I wasn't really sure where we go from there, but it's clear where we've gone. And, you know, if we ever get another Batman Arkham game, it's going to be immediately compared to Arkham Asylum and City. And it's like, good luck being better than those. I, I really don't think any other game's going to ever be better than those, but I will buy it regardless. And that's it for this video. I hope you uh, people enjoyed the video. Let me know what your favorite Batman is in the comments and all that great stuff. If you haven't uh, subscribed, uh, that would be really great. I do lots of ranking videos. I would appreciate it. Comment bricks it in the in the comments if you made it to this part. That's our that's our secret code word, you know. And uh, yeah, have a great Christmas, uh, Happy New Year, Fourth uh, of July, or whatever upcoming holidays near you. See you.